this is Greg Allison with Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm coming to you on the 23rd of May, probably posting the 24th or later because posting takes time, especially when I got edited. And I'm out here in my garden, I'm gonna plant and set out peppers, hot peppers. I'm gonna set some of these guys here out in this row. Some of them will go in front of the house. I'm gonna save that one for squash over here. So what I'm gonna do, you've seen me <coughs> putting down black cloth this uh, agricultural cloth, horticultural cloth, and cutting holes in it and digging through it. I'm gonna try it the other way around today. I'm gonna try to dig all my holes and then try to figure out where they are and cut the holes after that. I think I can go a lot faster that way. So that's what we're gonna try. Now you see I have a whole bunch of holes dug in the ground here with a post hole digger. These are big holes. These are the kind of holes I like to dig, you know, for setting out big plants that's gonna feed a lot. And it's the best way to do it. Why? Because I can throw in a whole lot more worm castings into each hole. Now they're all set two foot apart. I used this piece of a wild lettuce stalk. I cut it to two feet and center to center. They're roughly about two feet apart, as you can see. I use this as my measuring stick. Sometimes it's easier just to set a pre-cut stick of some type to use. I had a wooden stick I cut last week. Thought it lasted a while, but a lot of people in and out just come up missing. I have time to cut another wooden stick, so I just cut that stock. It won't last long, but it'll do me this weekend. So we're going to fill these up. And basically all I got to do is take a shovel, <coughs> take some of the stuff, and put in. Like so. You want a good bit. The beauty of worm castings is they do not burn up your plants, unlike cow manure. You can take cow manure or horse manure and make a better fertilizer, higher quality, that will feed your plants far better and not burn them up either when you use worm castings. Worm castings are like nature's miracle. And you see, I'm almost filling these back up with, these, with this stuff. I'm hoping I can drape that black plastic across there and figure where these holes are. Because I like making good sized holes, not the puny little holes you make with a tulip digger or one of these little bitty garden spades like that you know I like to deal and I'm trying to do production here I need to get larger scale make things happen now, if you went to the store and bought worm castings like this probably cost you a fortune but guess what I don't have a little worm farm I got a big worm farm <laughs> Greg why aren't you selling worms I just don't have time to deal with the pressure of selling them right now my garden's got to be planted. My taxes have got to be done. I got some mercy problems I'm dealing with in the house. Quite a few things. On top of that, the postal department, the post office, it just is getting very terrible about delivering worms. They're making it almost impossible. Their delays are like over a week for every shipment, it seems like. Occasionally they get some there in a couple of days. <sighs> So I don't know. The post office being the way it is, it might be that the best thing for worm farms is just to sell fishing bait or, or local garden worms. Yeah, I got worms, see that? <laughs> That's be great in my garden. Now tell everybody not to dig your worms with a spade when you're harvesting to sell worms, but I'm digging to put in the garden. And believe it or not, most of the worms aren't getting cut up. And I wouldn't do that for customer worms. But it works for what I'm doing here. So that's the beauty of having a large scale worm farm for yourself. Now how are you going to get your worms? Well, let's hope the post office gets back on delivery. Gets back on point. If they're running slow, and we're talking the warm months of the summer, I am not going to be super encouraged to be shipping worms in the hot summer if they're running slow. In the past, I had no problem shipping worms year round. Put a video on this topic on. I mean, all sizes, year round, hottest and coldest days, never lost any worms. Now, it seems like it's exceedingly difficult to get any delivered alive. And that cost me a lot of money. Can't afford to ship worms that way. And I just don't like the proposition thinking my precious little worms got a poor chance of surviving because the post office 
and it didn't start with a recent pandemic. This started beforehand because they can't seem to hire people to work in uh, certain facilities. There we go. Now we'll try with a cloth and see if I can make this work. Let me show you how to support my channel and get your heirloom seeds at the same time. Simply find one of my videos that has the, the links below. Some of my live sessions don't. So I'd say go in here to this video. So go down here, to, you can either go to my pinned comments and click more, or you can go up here to show more here. There's two ways. It's redundant. Show more or pinned comments. Either way, you're going to find links to videos and various other things. But at the very top, what you're going to find, these things were supporting my channel, teamed up with True Leaf Market. And here's the link. You click the link to True Leaf Market. Bada bang. There it is. Here. Your non GMO seed source since 1974. I look here what all you can get. You can get garden seeds, microgreen seeds, sprouting seeds, wheatgrass. You can get supplies to grow these things with. Everything you need. All kind of seeds, things that you need to get your garden going. See, microgreens. I should have to grow stuff indoors. Garden supplies. Let's say you want to grow carrots. Bam. Parsnips. And not only that, but True Leaf Market actually tells you how to grow your seeds. Look at these carrots. Are they taste a little scrumptious. They tell you where it grows and how to plant them. You can't beat that right here at True Leaf Market, an excellent source for your seeds. So please order, use the link below my channel, in my channel, in my videos. So please use the link and support my channel. Turn these corners down and I can roll this out. Ideally, I would be laying out two of these because this is a little, not quite as wide as the bed. In the ideal world, in the ideal world, I might be a guy that's got time to do things. My life right now, time is a non-existent precious commodity. So I'm out here doing this as the best I can. So I'll still have to do some weeding. This won't entirely get rid of the weed problem, but it'll make it a lot more manageable. You know, the bane of a farmer or a gardener is weeds. So we're gonna roll this out and see how it works for making holes in the right place once I get it done. I can't do it in a rubber camera. So I think the easiest way to manage this is go and roll and staple as I go and plant as I go too. So I can tell where the holes are. So I'm just gonna go in and cut right where the hole is. There we are. And I can take the plant and put it in there and staple it down. All right, to show you how this is gonna go. You remember I dug a beak hole and I put some of that stuff in there. I'm gonna put this in here. We'll take this other loose dirt around here and just fill it in and I'll have to use both hands to get this right. But you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. So I have plants and stakes all kind of pre-laid out. I'll have to stretch this cloth out as I put it out. So I come in here, I cut the hole right over this hole. I find it's easy to find. I'm coming here and the soil is so loose I can just put the pepper plant in the way I need to. And I can kind of squish the dirt around underneath it feed it around as need be. Get it all kind of leveled out as much as I can. Don't want to pack it down. This is actually going down pretty smooth here. You know, it ain't exactly the most pretty thing in the world, but it's kind of working. Well, this pepper plant's gonna have some unexpected company here. So you know what, I'm not gonna put one here because this is turmeric. You know, I had turmeric here last year. I didn't wanna grow it here this year. And I had some kids supposedly pull it all out of the ground for me, and I didn't get a very good harvest. And I don't know why I'm finding it everywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to let the turmeric grow here, I think. All right, second thought, I think I might move it. So what I discovered is I can cut this with a spade. Watch this. Look at this. It ain't pretty, but it's going to help. Yeah, stuff will grow up on the edges. Maybe a little bit under the pepper plants so they get some size on them. But it'll help keep the peppers off the ground. It will also immensely cut down the weeding that got to be done. I'll just have to weed along the sides. Yeah, it would have been better if I'd had two pieces, but coordinating and unfurling two pieces in here would have been cumbersome. You know, it's better if you could plant stuff right in here, started with smaller pepper plants, 
yeah, there's a lot of things that could be done better in a perfect world, but it's not a perfect world. And I, sometimes I just don't have time. This worked. It's expedient. Hopefully I can reuse this fabric in the future. Yeah, sure, they say cut holes and burn them out with torches so that it'll last longer. Well, I bought a torch and tried to do that. And every time I tried to flight it up, the darn thing flamed out. So I guess I needed a bigger torch. You know, there's just so many things you can do and so many things you can chase. When you got a day job and a lot of other things going on, sometimes you just got to make it work. And this will work. It'll help. It's not the best thing in the world. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. But what I was able to do was get big holes dug, put in large amounts of worm cast, and it's a lot better than I would have been able to done making the holes from the top. And I just unfurl this over it and cut through it. A little different from what I've shown you on the past, but it worked. Like I said, it's not pretty, but it worked. In the meantime, I'm gonna have to do a video real fast. I gotta cut a bunch of these scapes, and we'll have to start dealing with garlic. That'll be worth a few videos. One thing I know is that there's YouTube gremlins, there's gremlins in the system that eat subscriptions and that eat uh, update notifications. I was subscribed to one of my favorite channels and discovered I wasn't subscribed to it anymore. So like, really? So, you know, I took care of that today. But it happens to me all the time too. So uh, please check and make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe and bang that notification bell and click all. And some of these uh, blackberries are turning red, which means they're still green. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. We have a lot of blackberries out here. And again, sweet gum. And we got our edible pine. I showed you how to do that, right? If you don't remember that, or if you don't remember me showing you how to purify water out here, you need to search my videos. There's a lot of people always ask me, Greg, you got a video on this? I wish you had a video on that. And I go, what do you got a video on it? Like somebody asked me today about the peeper frogs. I said, look, I got two videos, too. So all you got to do is you go up in the screen, where it says video. See, you can put these playlists on here, and you only put so much stuff in the playlist and they fill up. And mine are full. I need to reorganize them. I can still never put everything there. So the way you really find all the videos is you just go up and click videos at the top of the screen. And then you scroll down and find everything. Same way, people are always asking me, Greg, where's the link to Trilly Market? Where's the link to this? It's all, all my more recent videos. Just all you got to do again is scroll or click more. It's in the notes. Click more. And in the expanse, it's in my pinned comments and in the notes inside the video itself. So they're actually in two places. You just got to click them more and scan through them. But again, yeah, we're going to have plenty of blackberries here. A lot of wild edibles. Lots growing on. Wild and planted. And of course, look here. We got Mo Bees. And the guy who brings them, his name is Mo. Short for Mohammed. We call him Bees Mo. <laughs> or Buzz Mo. Actually, we usually, I call him Buzzmo. He's bringing more Mo and Mo bees. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's a really nice guy, my friends. He's a nice, nice, good guy. Look, ain't he pretty house? And he'll be bringing even Mo. <laughs> so, that is so. Please uh, support my channel by going to Tree Leaf Market and PrepWithGreg.com. Tree Leaf Market. You know, you can buy all your seeds. There, heirloom seeds, the stuff you need. You can still buy them. You know, now's the time to plant your garden. You can still get seeds. You also get enough seeds that, you know, your neighbors get hungry. Say, hey, let's grow in your garden. I'll do a video about sharecropping lawns real soon, how that can work. So, there's that. And prepwithgreg.com, $100 off of your um, one month food supplies. I'll show you how to do that in some other future video. Again, it's been in other videos. Showing you how to go through and clip through all that stuff. And look at my garlic. Some of it's getting ready already. It's starting to turn brown. It's about time. Getting close to time to harvest. I gotta get the escapes cut off and then we'll be harvesting garlic soon and planting something else there. All right. And tomatoes. So we were setting out tomatoes the other day. I'm gonna do some videos on this. About to setting them out. And tying them up they're about ready to be tied up and pruned i gotta prune them too so all i can say is stay tuned a lot more coming and thank you for watching